So our next speaker is um, Chris Smith, one of our cornea fellows. He's going to be talking about preloaded DMEC tissue. Would you take it away? I didn't, I didn't let her announce, but uh, I guess the buck's out now. I, I took a job in Billings, Montana, so you guys can spread the news. So I'll be up there next year working with the eye clinic, Dr. LaGreca. So um, this is kind of not a big issue to most of those that aren't performing corneal surgery, but I think it will be a little bit more beneficial, especially as um, cornea surgeons. I know uh, one of my past attendings that worked at the Moran Eye Center, uh, John Holds, always used to joke while we're in the OR, it's $200 a minute. So um, if you add up the, the different time for preparing these tissues, um, that can get quite expensive, especially with long procedures like DMEC that, that can be lengthy. So um, this is a new technique that um, I first wanted to thank the Utah Alliance Eye Bank, especially Wade McIntyre that's helped me out with this. And this is something that they will be introducing to um, be available to cornea surgeons hopefully very soon. Um, I have no financial disclosures in this doc. So I love the iBank data. I know we all like to kind of go through it. It's one of my favorite uh, yearly things that come out to see kind of the trends of going out. And this makes me really excited about how um, far we're pushing DMEC and DSEC the endothelial transplants of the last five years have gone, you know, up a thousand each year, and DSEC is actually decreasing, and that's mostly because DMEC is kind of taking the load on that. And I'm, and I, we can only imagine that that's just going to go higher and higher and higher, um, especially here. There's kind of this exponential cre increase here. And if you were to compare this to your, uh, and, and this just kind of shows the year to year as it kind of goes up. And if you were to compare these trends to your Coinbase data, it's actually very similar to the Bitcoin. Whether that's a coincidence, I don't know, but someone's going to have to do a little correlation here. Unless, unless you were one of the suckers that bought in uh, November of 2017. So um, I'm, I'm just going to kind of explain. The, the, this is more of a visual, uh, you know, audio visual because the video is kind of the most important thing of this, how this gets loaded and gets into the eye. So this was done at the eye bank. Um, this is them preparing the tissue. So I'll kind of talk us through each step here. And I'll, and I'll stop exactly kind of where, uh, a, half of this is the eye bank's already been doing kind of pre-stripping and getting the tissue ready for us. And then the other half we have to do in the operating room. And I'll, I'll point out to that, that point. Um, in the middle here. So um, first they're going, this is optosol, they're going to kind of just place on the cornea. They kind of score decimase, and this is similar to what we would do to the host tissue when we were stripping decimase. You just kind of score into there and make a separation plane that you can kind of flat back. This is them scoring it. And then we want to stain. It really highlights decimase and gives us kind of idea, clue what we're peeling back and um, they'll rinse it out. This is just kind of uh, opening, uh, stripping the outer skirt so that they can get it plain to peel that decimase back. And then they'll uh, flap that, the tissue so if we can, we start to see decimase with that staining. This they're going to pull the entire, very gently, and this is very important not to uh, turn the tissue. Um, manipulate as little as possible here because we're stripping it back. And the main purpose of this is to get the S stamp. And without a good S stamp, this surgery is impossible. So here's a derm punch. They're actually going to be punching the stroma and anterior parts of the cornea. They're going to, uh, then they'll lay that decimase that they stripped back flat. And this, I didn't go into detail, but it's very important to get all the fluid out of there and get this really flat because we need a trephine. Then they p p peel that um, punch hole back so that the anterior decimase is actually exposed. This is the cornea flipped around. So 
so that they can use this S and make a nice S stamp for the surgeons to orient themselves. And you'll see it kind of pop on there. So that's upright. That's what you want to see when the case is over. It's upright. You don't want to see a two, you want to see an S. And they'll put that little cap back on and flip it over. So I should pause it here. So this is at the point normally when we get the tissue, um, it just comes in the Optisol in a container. It comes about this prepared so far. And so all, all of this will be new that they, uh, that they will do an eye bank to kind of save us some time. So they will, this is, uh, they'll start off with trephinating tips. And this is usually what we have to do in the operating room. So this is a trephine that they use to uh, punch a nice um, graft. And then they'll stain it again and the outer skirt that you punched does, uh, in, in my experience, doesn't come off this easily, but they did a really good job. It just kind of fell off there for them. Um, and then you want to make sure all that tissue is removed. You don't want any tags or anything like that because that could um, disrupt things. Then they gently peel back. Um, they use a the forceps, and this is just like a one-touch technique, probably the only time you really touch the tissue and you, uh, you kind of pull back and straight up and it kind of flops in its, on itself and then you lay it back in the fluid there and it'll start to roll up. And this part um, will actually save a lot of time because we have to stain the tissue and that, I mean, you put the, you want a really good stain or it makes it more difficult. So you put the stain in and that takes, you know, you gotta wait about four to, you know, we usually do about four minutes here. And then we dilute it out. You want to make sure that thing doesn't flip around because it can, it can actually get washed out of that chamber there. And this part is also new that we don't do in the operating room. They're um, filling it up with Optisol because as they load these things, they want the tissue in Optisol. And then they'll take this um, Jones tube and suck it up with the Optisol. And you'll see it in there. And obviously you want to try and get it at no air bubbles is, is ideal. And um, just plug it up and plug kind of both ends uh, up there. And then that'll just kind of soak up as you see it there in the tissue. It's kind of hanging out in the Jones tube. And then now that, so this, this is all new done in the eye bank. And when they bring us the tissue, it will look like, as they prepared it, um, first your computer will spasm, and then it will look like, no, hold on, it'll look like that. And it just comes in the Optisol, it kind of soaks in there, and they tr um, transport this. And ideally, you know, it would be stripped the day before so that this all would be less than 24 hours. Although, um, Mark Terry, who's uh, up in Oregon, has kind of been one of the big pioneers on this, has shown up to three days. It's been, you know, good and viable tissue, so, of, of transporting. And they fly it around and bump it around on the road and stuff, so it's good to transport. Um, and then this is actually from a paper by Mark Terry and his group. Um, this just shows the tissue being loaded, because we haven't done any of these at the Moran Eye Center. I just kind of wanted to show that the tissue, you know, you pull it out of that tube and, it, and it's ready to go and you, all you have to do is just kind of uh, pop it on the syringe. Uh, most people will dilute that Optisol out and you have to gently do that with BSS here. You'll see them kind of replace, um, not to, you don't want to push your tissue out, but you, you gently um, replace the Optisol and then just inject it in the, into the eye. I wanted to show this because, I mean, that's pretty incredible staining still for, you know, considering that's really good and enough for the surgeon to see and be able to get things upright and do a good job to, you got a good S stamp there, so. Um, anyway, that's the goal of kind of things how they should. Uh, so the next question is, how is how does this 
fair as far as endothelial cell loss? Is it going to make our tissue uh, less successful during the transplant? And this is a paper published this, this past year with, by the Terry Group. Um, they, they report, you know, with uh, the loss is like 15 to 18, per, or 13 to 18 percent in these. And they're all similar, you know, compared to after the processing, shipping, graft, or stored. It is um, significant compared to strip, pre-stripped only, but there's not, I mean, that doesn't really help us because, uh, you know, you are manipulating the tissue after you pre-strip it anyway, so um, there isn't good data there. And no one's really published yet um, these graphs after they've after they've been injected into the eye and you know months later and stuff like that. So the buck's still on that, but there's good anecdotal evidence that these are doing very well. Um, and then this is some another way. This is kind of shows how they evaluate the tissues with without injecting them and doing a you know confocal microscopy to measure endothelial cell density. Uh, this is a certain stain that they put on that after that they can just inject the tissue not into the eye but on a plate and a microscope and evaluate them. And the more folds, the more staining they have, the more um, endothelial cell loss they can predict. And so these are all the different ways. This is unstained preloaded at the top, still pretty good tissue, not a lot of staining, also pre-stained, which most people do. And then at the bottom is kind of preloaded stained, has a little higher kind of an uglier, ratty, ratty looking tissue. And I'll show a picture of what they did with this of preloaded stain. It's just a, or a, um, just in case you don't get a good stain or something, it just goes to show that, um, see is, is this tissue really isn't stained at all. It is a pot, there is a possibility you can still stain it um, inside the tube, which is good just in case, you know, the stains runs out because without that, um, you're pretty toast. You can't do the surgery without a good, well, it'd be very difficult. Um, so they're rinsing out the optisol and then you can kind of see that tissue in there kind of floating up. And then the stain will come in in just a second. Here it is. They just inject it straight into the tube and let it stain in there. And then as they dilute out the stain and replace with PSS, the tissue is pretty well stained. But that was a little more damaging on their results compared to the other two. So um, I don't know if this step is necessary because you know we can stain it in the at the eye bank and stain it really well and um, should be good to go. Um, and this was a paper done actually before. Uh, I just kind of wanted to, it was really interesting too that they were, they put the tissue not in a Jones tube, but a, um, an IOL injector that they just loaded in and pulled through. And um, they got decent results with this as well. And this was a 2.2 millimeter. You, normally those Jones tubes are about three uh, millimeters. So um, smaller wounds, obviously, just like small incision cataract surgery, better for the patient outcome. So, um, but once again, there were a lot of problems with this, including tears, loss of endothelial cells, and all that stuff. So, um, do you guys have any questions about preloaded DMEC? All right, thank you.